What if you could speed up your coding process 10x and have an AI tutor explain concepts perfectly tailored just for you, give you quizzes, a customized plan, and basically provide what you would get in an overpriced computer science degree? Trust me, I have one. Today, I'll show you how to use ChatGPT to master coding in record time and basically download information to your brains. Okay, okay, we're just using it to learn to code, but still, we can learn to code 10 times faster with ChatGPT than with that, so I'd say that's pretty genius. We'll be using it to get tailored project ideas, create quizzes, a totally custom plan, and be our personal tutor all for free in the most optimal way. When I paid over 50K for a computer science degree. So if you feel for me, hit that like button. If you're interested in more tech content, make sure to subscribe and let's talk about using ChatGPT to learn to code. Also, let me know if you already use ChatGPT for coding and let me know how in the comments below. Seriously, it is a huge learning hack. I wish I had this 10 years ago when I was doing my computer science degree. All I had were bad university professors and some of the first Indian YouTubers to help me out. So I am very jealous of all of them. Let's get started. Step one, make friends with ChatGPT. Familiarize yourself with it. Before we dive into coding, it's essential to understand that ChatGPT is a language model which generates text that resembles human writing. It essentially predicts the next word in a sentence given its context. This means that you can interact with ChatGPT in natural language, but this also means you need to get good at writing prompts. Because just like everything in CompSci, if you put garbage in, you get garbage out. So it's important that we learn to write good prompts. Here are five tips for writing effective prompts for ChatGPT. First, start with a clear purpose. Make sure you have a clear idea of what you want to achieve. Do you want to generate a specific type of response, a formal response, a joke, a story? Having a clear purpose in mind will help you write a prompt that's more likely to produce the desired results. Next, provide context. The more context you provide in your prompt, the better the model will be to understand what you're looking for. For example, if you're asking to generate a story, make sure to provide background info on the setting or the characters. Don't be afraid to tell ChatGPT what role it's playing. I love to tell ChatGPT to act as if. So a really good trick for this is to make the first sentence of your prompt act as if. Act as my social media manager, my computer science teacher, an interviewer. This gives ChatGPT context of how it should interact with you. Next, keep it concise. ChatGPT is designed to generate text based on a short prompt. So aim for a prompt that's a few sentences long, not a paragraph. Also remember to be specific because ChatGPT is trained on a large corpus of text. So it's important to be specific in your prompts to help guide the model towards the type of response you're looking for. For example, if you're asking for a joke, you'll get much better results if you specify the type of joke, a pun or a knock-knock joke, be specific. And finally, use a conversational tone. It's designed for text-based conversation. So if you want more natural sounding responses, then you need to give it more natural sounding prompts. Great, now that we know how to talk to ChatGPT, step two, choose your weapon. It's time to choose your weapon of choice, and I'm talking about programming languages. Of course, there are many to choose from, each with its own unique strengths and weaknesses. So if you're looking to build sleek and stylish websites, maybe choose JavaScript. If you want to analyze vast amounts of data, Python is probably the way to go. So before you even start learning to code, decide which language suits your needs based on what you want to do. Here are some general guidelines for programming languages based on what you want to do. So feel free to pause the video, or follow me on Instagram where I also share this as a post. For web development, languages like JavaScript, Python, Ruby, and PHP are popular choices. JavaScript is often used for front-end development, even though it can be for back-end as well. It's great because it can be for both, but Python and Ruby are commonly used just for back-end development. PHP is often used for server-side development, and honestly, I would not recommend. For mobile development, languages like Swift or iOS and Java for Android are the most popular choices, though Kotlin is now the new Java, and I would recommend Kotlin over Java. For game development, languages like C++ and C Sharp are often used, and it's great to learn a game engine like Unity or Unreal Engine. For AI and ML, Python is the most widely used language because it has a rich ecosystem of libraries and tools for these tasks, and R is also commonly used for data analysis and visualizations and ML and AI, but I tried it and Personally, if you're just starting to learn to code, Python is a much better choice. If you're interested in system administration or infrastructure, languages like Python and Bash are commonly used and they're well suited for automating tasks and interacting with operating systems. So definitely learn those. Finally, if you're interested in embedded systems for developing low level systems and devices, then you're probably gonna have to do C and assembly. 
and that those are not very beginner friendly. So I would not recommend to start there. Great, now that we've chosen a programming language, step three is making a roadmap with ChatGPT. So we're gonna create a customized learning roadmap that gives us tailored project ideas. So we need to ask ChatGPT to recommend projects tailored to your interests and experience levels. So for example, we can ask, can you suggest some beginner Python projects for someone interested in data science? Or a better prompt using the tips that we discussed earlier is, I'm a beginner interested in learning Python for data science. Can you suggest five starter project ideas that would be good for practicing arrays, loops, and visualizations? That was a lot more specific and used all the tips that we talked about earlier. Testing these concepts, including distractors and explaining for the answers. Next, we're gonna wanna create a plan. So have ChatGPT develop a personalized study plan based on your goals. A prompt you can use is, can you create a five-week plan for me to learn web development with HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? or even better, my goal is to become a web developer in 12 weeks, give it a timeline. And as you can see with all of those problem examples, the key improvements we made are specifying the background, the goals, asking targeted questions, and using a conversational tone. So this helps ChatGPT generate tailored relevant suggestions for learning the code efficiently. Now, step four, got a question about coding? Ask ChatGPT. Whether you're struggling with syntax or trying to understand complex algorithms, ChatGPT's got your back. So if you get stuck, you can provide hints, debug code, and recommend fixes. Just don't be too reliant on it. So an example of how you would describe the issue and ask ChatGPT for advice is, here's some Python code I wrote for a web scraper that isn't working. Can you please debug this code, explain what's wrong, and provide a corrected version with inline comments? Step five. Practice makes perfect. There's no shortcut to becoming a skilled programmer and ChatGPT can help you practice coding concepts. And when you put in the work, it's a great idea to give your code snippets to ChatGPT and ask it to evaluate and suggest improvements. So that way you'll get instant feedback and make much more rapid progress. You'll be a coding ninja in no time. Step six is expand your horizons. You don't wanna be dependent on ChatGPT. So expand your horizons. While ChatGPT is a fantastic resource, it's important to seek out more resources to broaden your knowledge and to stay up to date with the latest trends and technologies. So it can even help you find the best online courses, books, and tutorials to suit your needs because now it once again has access to the internet. But remember, don't rely solely on ChatGPT or any AI for that matter. You need to broaden your horizons. And in fact, you should be getting courses and certifications if you're looking to get a job, up level, or get promoted and you should always be learning. So a great tool for this is our video sponsor today, edX. With edX, you can even put Harvard on your LinkedIn, which is a huge life hack. How? You can take Harvard's famous CS50 computer science course on edX. It has interactive assignments, quizzes, forums, and lectures from Harvard professors, and it's free or super cheap if you wanna get a certificate if you want one. And I think it's about one one thousandth of the price of going to Harvard. And when you complete a course, you even earn a valuable certificate to showcase on your resume or on LinkedIn. So edX course certificates can really give your profile a boost and show you have up-to-date and demand skills. So whether you're interested in programming, data science, business, or even humanities, edX has a course for you with options to learn at your own pace and engage interactively. So it's a great way to further your knowledge. So check out edX in the link in the description for affordable courses that can take your career to the next level and use code DeliaEdX15 for 15% off your first course because you can't always rely on ChatGPT. In fact, back to the video, keep in mind that ChatGPT isn't always accurate in its responses and the code it provides might not be optimally functional. So you should never ever use ChatGPT as a holy grail of information. Despite these caveats though, it's still an amazing tool that you should take advantage of. So if you wanna see other fun things you can do with ChatGPT, check out other videos over here. Remember to like it if you found this video helpful, leave any questions or comments down below and subscribe so I can see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.